With me is Dr. Matthew Baldock from the Centre for Automotive Safety Research. Matthew has been doing uh, a lot of uh, intense, uh, in-depth crash investigation as part of his uh, part of his work, uh, and he's been doing that now for about 15 years. Thank you for joining us, Sir Matthew, this evening. Matthew, I, I note in the advert that there was uh, texting was the issue, and I, I was reading in the papers in May this year, in fact on the 14th of May, a girl called Savannah Nash uh, in Missouri in America um, got her driver's licence, uh, having turned 16 the week before. On May the 15th, uh, she was involved in her collision in her first solo drive where she drove into a truck and uh, obviously died, and on her phone was an unsent text. So let's have a look at what the sort of risks of using a mobile phone might be. No need to rush, but you've got four seconds. There's only three choices. And the estimate here is no increase at all, which was probably my best guess. Um, <laughs> I would refer to two times as double, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the right answer. It seems the majority are telling us it's three times. Is that the case? Well, um, people have quite wisely chosen the largest of the uh, three numbers there. Um, this this uh, number is based on a, a study done uh, by a European road safety researcher looking at he did a meta-analysis, so we got a whole lot of other studies that have been done looking at the risk of using a mobile phone while driving, combined all the data, and the best estimate for the increased uh, risk of having a crash while using a phone was three times. Now, it is important to emphasise that um, what we're talking about here in terms of phone use is, is probably talking on the phone. Um, once you get to specific tasks like uh, manually dialing a number or texting, as you just referred to, then the risk, I'm sure, would be a lot higher than three. Are you suggesting that my wife can't multitask? I'm sure your wife is brilliant at multitasking. I would not suggest any, any otherwise. Um, however, it's probably best not to do it while driving, yes. Um, if you think about the, the task um, of, of driving, there's, there's constantly changing visual spatial information that you need to attend to. And you need to process that and then execute uh, manual responses um, on the basis of, of decision making. So if you're engaged in other tasks, then your attention is drawn away from all of this information you have to process and, um, and degradations in performance are the result. So is it the case we're doing, we are capable of doing two things at once, and I'm trying to be a little more serious, are we capable of doing two things at once or do we somehow switch or divide <coughs> our attention? Okay, well it, when we're talking, let's, let's take mobile, fo mobile phones as an example. When you're talking on a mobile phone uh, while driving, generally what you'll do is you, you'll continue to look at the road scene, but you'll also be talking on the phone. So um, when I say you, I mean someone who would do that. Um, so you're paying some of your attention to the, the verbal task and some of the, your attention is going to the uh, visual spatial task. Uh, now there was a study done uh, recently in America where they got people to drive in a simulator and do verbal tasks while, while trying to drive. And they noticed that um, your, the amount of uh, activity um, in the brain, as monitored by MRI, uh, in the visuospatial areas of the brain decreased by about 37% while engaged in the verbal task. Um, and uh, also they noticed that the actual driving performance associated with, with this degraded. So that's called divided attention. Now, um, when we're talking about texting, it's something a little bit different. That's what we would call selective, uh, selective attention. No, switching attention, sorry, switching attention. So what happens with texting is because uh, it requires you to look at the phone um, totally in order to do it correctly, um, what people do is they look a little bit at the road scene, then they look at their phone, then a little bit at the road scene, a little bit at the phone. And so they switch their attention between the two tasks. So while they're not um, attending to the, um, the road scene, when, while they're attending to the phone, there is absolutely zero attention, uh, zero activity um, in the brain related to monitoring the road. And so um, the risks um, during that period are a lot greater. And I, I think we've got a video that, um, that does a good job of uh, illustrating the, the, the trouble with uh, switching attention, um, particularly uh, texting. Now obviously that's a little bit tongue in cheek, <laughs> but uh, I think it gets across the point very well. The last bit says it's not possible for those that didn't speak the language. <laughs> um, Matthew, I know there's probably three things I picked up out of that. One was um, visual distraction, which is sort of eyes off road stuff as they were looking away. I saw some um, uh, cognitive, they, you know, thinking about different things, mind off the task. 
Um, and obviously that physical distraction, sort of hands off the wheel while you're trying to do mm. too many tasks at once. Um, do we find, though, that when we're talking on mobile phones with hands-free or handheld, there's a significant difference? Um, well, hands-free um, obviously confers some benefits because um, you're not sort of uh, physically um, handling the phone and you're not looking at it as much. But studies have shown that, that even with a hands-free phone uh, or, hands -free or usage of a hands-free phone, about half of the time as you do that, you still end up touching the phone, you still have your eyes off the road. So um, it, it's still not as safe as not using a phone at all. Um, also, people using a, a handheld phone, they do tend to drive a little bit more slowly while they're doing it to try and uh, reduce their risk a bit, while people using hands-free phone tend not to. So there is still a risk even with hands-free phone. And what are some of the vehicle outcomes? You know, people are, uh, people are taking their eyes off the road. Okay, well, I think we've got um, uh, a slide, or a couple of slides that will help uh, illustrate this. So talking about taking your eyes off the road, um, a, a recent study looking at, um, oh, with lots of cameras in vehicles, looking at um, following about 100 cars for a period of time, and looked at uh, the risks associated with eyes off the road, uh, and found that the risk particularly kicked in when you look for more than two seconds away from the road. So let's imagine two vehicles travelling at 60 kilometres per hour. And uh, let's say that uh, an obstacle appears on the road 50 metres in front of them. So, for example, a pedestrian stepping onto the road and, and staying on the road not moving. It sounds like an odd thing, but trust me, it does happen. So the pedestrian is on the road 50 metres in front of the vehicles. Now, let's take the case first of an attentive driver. So they're travelling 60 kilometres per hour. That means 16.7 metres per second. Um, typically, let, let's give them uh, a typical reaction time of one and a half seconds. So in one and a half seconds, you travel 25 metres. So that leaves another 25 metres for them to stop before hitting the pedestrian, and uh, cars are capable of doing that. So let's have them react and brake. They would not strike the pedestrian. Now let's take the case of someone who looks away at just the wrong moment for two seconds. So in two seconds, they travel 33 metres. Now, if you add on to 33 metres the reaction time of one and a half seconds, that's another 25 metres. Uh, so what happens there? They only start braking after they've struck the pedestrian. So two seconds um, is, is unfortunately very common when using a, um, uh, a handheld phone or texting, and that can obviously make all the difference. If you strike a pedestrian at 60 kilometres per hour, for plenty of pedestrians that will be a fatal collision. Now with learner drivers, uh, and certainly with P1 drivers, they're precluded from using any function of a mobile phone, mm -hmm. whether it be handheld or uh, hands-free. Um, so does that have some connection then to this automation of the driving task? Yeah, well if you think about um, any task, but I think driving is a very good example. When you're a novice at the task, you have to devote a lot more concentration to it. So if you think about driving, uh, when you're learning to drive, you have to think more about steering, you have to think about how to change gears, uh, think about changing lanes, you have to think, okay, I've got to check this mirror, then indicate, then that mirror, then um, shoulder check. Well, when you're a more experienced driver, you do that all automatically. So you move from what's called controlled processing, where you have to concentrate on the task and think about it, to what's called um, automatic processing, where you do lots of stuff without, without thinking about it. So for the novice driver, because they have to devote a lot more attention to the driving task in order to do it safely, if you've got anything that's distracting their attention, that's removing uh, a degree of their attention from the driving task, uh, the results for a younger driver, a novice driver, will be a lot worse. All right. Well, if I was looking at a young driver, if I was behind a P-plate driver, for example, um, would I notice anything? Would the car you know, wander, speed up, slow down? What are some of those sorts of characteristics that I could look for? I think with a, with a, a distracted driver, there are probably two main things that occur. One of them we've already touched on, which is the, uh, the delay in, in reaction time to any kind of hazard, because they're not paying attention. The other thing is that uh, uh, vehicle control does suffer. Uh, so vehicles do tend to drift out of the, out of the lane a little bit. And if you're thinking about a, a country road, for example, that can be catastrophic. If you, you drift just enough to get onto, say, an unsealed shoulder, um, a lot of people will panic, lose control of the vehicle, and the results can be, um, can be dreadful. So drifting out of the lane is, is, is the other really dangerous result of driver distraction. Well, thank you. Thank you, Matthew Bordock, for joining us this evening. My pleasure. Thank you. Are there any questions? So how available is that raw data? Um, I, I think that um, depending on, on raw data, certainly we could um, provide sort of overall reports would certainly be available and, and journal articles. Um, 
a lot of the stuff we do, where, as, as John mentioned, we investigate road crashes in a great deal of depth, which involves uh, collecting a lot of very confidential information. We certainly can't share any of that, but any kind of overall uh, reports or, or studies, um, uh, you can contact us at the Centre for Automotive Safety Research, University of Adelaide. Now, Matthew, you have uh, a website. CASA has a website, CASR. Dot Adelaide dot edu dot au. Thank you. And on that, uh, I can access a number of those sorts of reports, can't I? That's right, yeah, yeah. All so of our, that all of that our might be a good place to start. And there's a question up the far end there. Have there been any studies comparing uh, talking hands-free on a mobile phone and talking to someone in the car? Because we sort of see that as a normal, non-distracting event to go through. Yeah, well, the, the, the same study I mentioned which looked at um, MRI did find that uh, with a passenger or, or someone else talking to you, it did also um, uh, draw your attention away from driving. But, but there are some differences. I think when, when you're using a hands-free phone, you probably have to concentrate a little bit harder to, to understand the voice that's speaking to you. Also, when you're with uh, a passenger who is with you, whether they're even aware of it or not, they may modulate uh, their, their conversation according to the driving task. And you can, you can do the same. Like, if you're going through a very complex junction or something, um, it's very easy to say, oh, just hold on a minute while I uh, negotiate this before, before resuming a conversation, which is a lot more difficult to do with someone who can't see what you're doing at the time. So the, they do seem superficially to be very similar, but uh, I think that a passenger would not uh, pose uh, the same degree of risk, certainly, as, as a hands-free phone. 